Good morning, and welcome. Glad that you are here to worship with us this morning. If you are worshiping with us through the TV or, or internet, we welcome you as well. And uh, glad that you are here with us today. I have one announcement to make, and that is, if you would like to order a poinsettia for the Christmas season, today is actually the first day of Advent, so be thinking about that. And I think today actually is, order deadline is Sunday, November 27th. That's today. So if you would still like to order a poinsettia and haven't ordered one yet, there are these little pink order forms right in the bath, back of the narthex, that little entry way back there. Just fill that out and uh, stick it right in the office. Uh, that'll be fine. That's all that I have for announcements. Are there any others? All right. Like I said before, today is the first day of Advent, so we will be lighting the Advent wreath today. So Will and Nancy and J.D. will be doing that for us. Thank you. If we could stand for the uh, call to worship, please. Yeah, thanks. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And also to you. This is the first Sunday in Advent, a time of preparation for the coming of the Christ child. Today we light the prophet's candle. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good tidings. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. Blessed he who come in the name of the Lord. Please join in singing hymn 196.
turn to 234 and we'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 4. Please take this time to greet one another. You may be seated, and we invite the children to come forward at this time for this morning's children's moment. And I hope some of you come up here because I'm going to get in trouble for wearing a hat if you don't. Good morning. How are you guys today? You guys know what season this is that we're celebrating? 
Deer season, that's right. <laughs> this is what I like about Northwest Pennsylvania. We know what season it is. Well, Josiah's wearing camouflage, and underneath my choir robe, I'm wearing camouflage, if you see that. And we had camouflage Sunday in the early service, and I wore my orange hat today. But can anybody tell me, why, why, why would a person wear camouflage? Yeah. So they blend in with their surroundings. <laughs> That's right. So they blend in with their surroundings. And so I wear, I have a lot of camo because I archery hunt, turkey hunt, and all kinds of stuff. My wife says I do too much of that, but I have a lot of camouflage because when I go to the woods, I want to, I want to blend in with my surroundings. What's that? How would you eat? Yeah. But tomorrow's deer season, and in Pennsylvania, during deer season, you're supposed to wear bright orange. They call it blaze orange or hunter's orange. And why, why do you wear blaze orange in hunting season? Deer. So other people don't mistake you for a deer. So other people don't mistake you for a deer. And we had somebody in the early service that was actually wearing deer antlers, wore deer antlers to church this morning, a young lady. And I told her, probably could get away with it today, but not tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you don't want to get mis mistaken for another deer, or for a deer, and, uh, yeah. So, you want to stick out, right? Yeah, you want people to see you. Absolutely. Yeah, so, and, and blaze orange is, is a pretty good color for that, because you don't see many wild animals that are that color. So, that's a good color. It shows up early in the morning, late at night, all through the day. But, you know, sometimes, I, I want to talk about this with you for a moment today, because sometimes... You know, we come to church, and we, we fit right in here, We're, and a lot of people think a lot like we do and, and uh, are good to us and are our friends, but then we go to places like school or to Chuck E. Cheese's, yeah, school, or to work. You, any of you guys have a job yet? No. You do, Joey does? Good man. Yeah, paying in for my Social Security. I appreciate that. So, but yeah, we go places, or to the store, yeah, and we go places, and we try to blend in. We don't want people to, to notice us. We don't want people to know that we know who Jesus is. Yeah, you see, sometimes we're embarrassed or we're scared somebody's going to pick on us. And there's no, no reason to be embarrassed. The good news that Jesus has to offer is the best news that's ever happened to the world. And that's, that's nothing to be ashamed of. We should be excited about that. And you know, if we try to blend in, there might be somebody that's just really wanting to hear about who Jesus is but doesn't know who to ask or doesn't know how to go about it. And so when we're trying to hide, we're going to miss an opportunity to share Jesus with somebody else. So it's good to stick out during hunting season and as a Christian. That's right. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. I thank you for these young children here and that they're here this morning, that their family sees it important uh, to raise them in the Word and, and in your ways. God, I ask you to bless them and their families. God, I ask that you would also... Give them and us the courage and the love, God, to, to recognize that there are people that need you. And God, for opportunities to share the love that you have for us and for them. God, we, we look for opportunities and ask for opportunities to share that with other people. In Jesus' name, amen. Children's Collection. camo boots. That's good. <laughs>
put it back in. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Our Father in heaven, we come before you in this season of thanksgiving, thinking of all the many blessings that we have to enjoy because you are so gracious to us. We thank you now for the opportunity to return a portion of what we have. We return it to you and to this church that it might be used to spread your word, to reach out to people around us in our community and out into the world in Jesus' name, amen.
You may be seated. Whenever we come together in the name of Jesus Christ, we are invited to go before the Lord in prayer and lift up the concerns that we have, the praises for the blessings that we share, and all those things in the fellowship and warmth of worship. Pastor Larry is not here with us this morning. Most of you probably know that uh, his stepfather passed away uh, this week, and so he's spending his time in Brookville and with his family during this time. He's very thankful for all the cards and recognition that he's received and, and the prayers that go out to them, and he asks that you will again continue uh, to lift up those prayers. There are many concerns in our congregation for people that have special needs, so as we gather together in prayer, we want to think about those needs. Uh, we know that God is aware of them before we ever bring them up, but uh, in our own hearts and minds, we are able to lift up the, the prayers and concerns that we have. So let us bow now, join our hearts and our thoughts in prayer. Our Father in heaven, again we are thankful that you call us to come together in worship and praise. We sing the songs of praise. We lift up the, the words that, that are part of our worship service. We lift up our hearts and minds and we open our hearts and minds to, to the concerns that we have for those around us. Many times there are concerns in our families and our relationships that have special needs. So we know, Father, that you are aware of those needs and we give them over to you. We know that in times of loss, in times of sickness, there are members of our congregation, members of our families that, that are suffering because of these things. So we give those things over to you, Father, knowing that, knowing and trusting in your healing power, in your comforting power, the way that you surround us with the warmth of your love that helps us to carry us through difficult times. Help us, Father, not to forget that even in, in good times, we sometimes are neglecting uh, the praise that we should be lifting up. So help us to remember that, remembering the good things that, that go on around us and how you are a part of those things. We thank you, Father, that through the love of Jesus Christ, we come together in worship, we come together in prayer, just as Jesus taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. And again, in the absence of Pastor Larry, uh, Alberta Smith has joined us for the morning message this morning. And so we want to welcome her and uh, spend this time with her. Good morning. This is a wonderful day. I think about the Advent and what it means to us at Christmas time, and I feel it is a, a wonderful time 
to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ because this is the first day of the Advent and uh, there was something special when Pastor Larry called me. Um, he asked me if I could preach and I said yes. And so I looked, at, looked back in a diary that I had and there was a lot of good things that happened to me at this time of year. Uh, my mother was raised Catholic and, but we changed to be United Methodist over the years and I had two uncles that were United Methodist ministers and thankful that I was raised in a good home. Not everything was good, but it was, God had his hand upon that. I'm going to um, remind you that the Latin word meaning Advent means coming. He is coming again for his bride. So we all want to remember what that really means. And because we had, most of us knew years ago, we would spoke in Latin and we'd learned Latin in school. Some of us, I don't remember any of it, but we took it anyway. So, but I want to thank God for this time of year because it makes us look to the Lord Jesus Christ. It makes him special to us. This time of year is always special to me because I look to him, and he is a center. If you noticed, Abbott candles, there is a white one, and that is Jesus Christ. We're to look to him through all things, not to ourselves. I'm going to be speaking to you today out of Matthew 5, 14, and 16. Um, I want to uh, read it out of the NIV first. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. But one, a candlestick that is given light with all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before man that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And if you notice, it's not about us. It's to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ, not you. So we have to remember that. I want to read to you out of the Life Application Bible, too, what it says there. Can you hide a city that is sitting on top of the hill? Its light at night can be seen for miles if you live for Christ. We will glow like lights shining others what Christ would be showing other what Christ would be like. We will glow like lights showing that Jesus Christ is here. We hide our light by being quiet when you should speak, going along with the crowd, denying the light, letting the sin dim your light, not explaining our light to others, ignoring the needs of others, being a beacon of truth. Don't shut your light off from the rest of the world. You are the light of the world. And it's not just us ministers, laymen, teachers, and so forth. It is you that are the light to the world. I do want to say when I was coming to Titusville eight years ago, I have a son who's federal probation officer, and he said, Mom, why are you going to Titusville? I said, that's where the Holy Spirit's leading me. No place else seemed quite right. And he said, you know, Titusville has the most drugs in that city for its size in all of the United States. Did you know that? For this size, the drugs are greater here than any city in the United States. We shouldn't want to be proud of that, but what are we doing about it? Are we letting our light shine? Are we out there ministering to people? Walking of children of light. We um, have not only received light, we can make light. Making light unto this world is what we're here for. Jesus has left us here with his Holy Spirit that we can be light unto the world. 
I want to tell you that when you say, I don't have any place to preach, I don't have any place to go, try Walmart. Walmart is a place to go when you want to spread your light. Because, you know, our souls, we see in someone's eyes, our spirit. You know, because you can look, and somebody could ask me, how are you feeling today? And I may say, okay. But I'm really not okay. Because if someone looks at me in my eyes that particular day, I may not feel well. I may have a problem. And back a few weeks ago, I was at Walmart, and there was a young lady there. She was not the kind of person that we would be proud of walking down the street with. She had tattoos on her arms and on her neck and pierced ears and holes in her ears that big around. And I was walking around there, and I was just paying attention to this young lady. And I saw she was very agitated. And I began to pray, and the Holy Spirit said, go talk to her. And I said, no, I don't want to do that. Second time he talked to me, I said, no, I don't want to do that. Well, when he speaks to you the third time, you better go. You know, we as pastors do the same thing in missionaries. We wait. But, you know, I went over and I began to tell, I said, do you know that Jesus loves you? And the tears just began to fall on her face. She was weeping and crying. And I didn't have a Kleenex, so I, I uh, went up to the service desk and got her a paper towel and began to talk with her. And I said, is there something I can pray with you about? She said, no one has ever told me that I was loved. You are the first person, and I don't know who this man Jesus is, but you're the first person that ever told me somebody loves me. My parents gave me away. I got married. I had children out of wedlock. She'd been married a couple times, and the husbands that she had had abused her. And she was living with a man that was very abusive also. And I just began to talk to her. And you have to be careful, though, people. But the Holy Spirit said, let's get her out of, out of Walmart. So I took her out. We walked out of Walmart, and I opened my car, and we sat side by side, and I began to share with her and tell her the love of Jesus Christ, how much he loved her. And I said, you realize he sent me here today to tell you that he loves you. She said, I don't know how he could love me because I sell drugs, I use drugs. She said, I've lost my children. She said, I'm due for to go to court for selling drugs. And I, said, and I began to minister to her, and I had my Bible there, and I began to read out of the Bible and tell her how much that God loved her and how that he wanted to be her friend. He was all in all to us. And she sat there weeping and crying, and I said to her, what can I do for you? And she said, you have been an angel that came to me today, and I said, no, God just sent me. I don't want to put my classification there. God just sent me as a human being to talk to you and tell you you were loved. And she, said, uh, she told me she was going to court in a, in a short time. So I got, uh, got her name. I never give my name. I never give my address or phone number. I got hers. And I called her, and I met her at the courthouse and sat with her. And she sat that stood there weeping and crying in the courtroom. And as I ministered, sat there and prayed the Holy Spirit to minister to her, and she, the judge asked her, do you have anyone here? And she said, there's a lady over there. I just know she's Smith. So I got up and I shared with the judge. She has to do some time. She's got to pay for her, the wrongs that she's done. We pay for those. 
But you know, God has his hand upon each one of you. And God wants you out there giving that light to those who are unlovely. You know, they may not all look like us. Thank God. They don't all look like me. But, you know, God's out there roaming around. And if we listen to the Holy Spirit, what he has to say to us, we can give light to those people who are unlovely. You know, and my heart just breaks at this time of year because last year we lost five teenagers in Titusville with suicide. I just heard this morning in service there was someone who committed suicide. And that just grieves my heart. We need to be out there sharing the word of God, giving the light to others. They are not going to come here in this sanctuary. We need to be out there ministering, looking for those who are hurting, who are dying, and those who want to be told Jesus loves them. There is many, many young people today that are out there that no one has ever loved them. Uh, this is our light is meant to be all over, even in our own, even where we work, our workplaces. How are you acting? She's, she, that woman's begin to upset me now. She's uh, digging in my personal life. What happens when you're out there golfing and you miss the ball, men, ladies? What do you say? How are you acting? How are you reacting? This is in the schoolroom. How are you acting? When the bully beside another young lady or a young man is bullying, what are we doing? What are you doing? This is, and we have to be the light of the world. This is, what, this is what God told us. He didn't say to be the light in the church. He said to be the light in the world. And this is what we need to say to Jesus. Where do you want me to go today? What do you want me to do today? I never leave the house without saying, God, use me. Send someone in my path that I can help today. Send someone to me that I can help. We are light of the world, but we are not of the world. Our light is to shine differently than those in the world because Jesus Christ is the center. Our life is to have a purpose. He died for us. He loves us. Jesus is the center of our life. Jesus has been the center of my life for many years. What would I do without him? What would you do without Jesus today? There's so many people out there hurting. We should look to him, not the world. I'm going to tell you a story about a little girl. Her name was Alberta. You know, at my age, I have lots of stories to tell. Lots of stories I can tell, right, brother? At our age, we have lots of stories. When I was a little girl, my father, uh, uh, my parents, they were potato farmers out in Dempsey Town. My mom was a nurse, and my father worked at Pennzoil. And about this time of year, they brought me to Titusville, and I went to Murphy's. And my mother said to me, you can go up, and there was three steps, I remember that very clearly. You can go up and look at the toys in that room. And she was buying thread, or I don't know what all she was buying, but uh, I was up there for quite a while, and she came up and she said, did you find something? And I was standing before this doll baby. She was beautiful. I can see her to this day. She had a turquoise dress. She had blonde hair and blue eyes, something like me. And I looked at her, and I said to my mother, you know, I would like Santa Claus to bring me that doll. My first, the first words out of my mother's mouth was, we need to pray to Jesus. Because we can't 
imagine the world doing this for us, we have to pray to him. And unfortunately, my father was an alcoholic. He was a good man, but he was an alcoholic. And I'd heard my parents talking back and forth, and he had gotten fired right around this time. My mother was the only support we had. And she said, we, on the way home, she said to me, she said, Alberta, you begin to pray about that doll baby. You pray, and if the Lord wants you to have it, he'll make sure you have it. So I prayed, and it was, a, like I say, about this time of year, and my mother was telling me about the Advent, and she, was, and she was making a quilt, the colors of the Advent, and so forth, and she would give me the scraps. So in my little mind, I thought, well, if I get a little box, and I take it to the barn, and I can take these scraps and I can sew. In mind, I was five, about five or six years old at the time. It wasn't too pretty, believe me, this little quilt that I was making, not like my mother's, but I was making this quilt, and I was believing Jesus was going to be there for me on Christmas morning. He was going to give me the desires of my heart. And so I began to pray, and it was getting close to Christmas, and I was getting a little weary. My uncle was a minister where we went to church, and my Aunt Dorothy was my favorite woman. And I was in her Sunday school class, and I was there, and she was looking at all of us, and she had a way of telling what was wrong. She said to me, Elbert, what's wrong? I said, oh, nothing. Nothing. Nothing's wrong. So after Sunday school class, she said, I want you to stay here. I want to talk to you. And I thought, oh, what did I do? So she talked to me and she said, Elber, there is something wrong. And I said to her, you know, I haven't told anybody this, but there's a doll baby that I would like Jesus to give me for Christmas. And I explained to her, she said, will you explain to me about this? And I said, okay. She said, you know, sometimes when we have problems, we need to share. And she said, I saw in your eye something was wrong this morning. I said, you did? And she said, yes, I did. So it, on Christmas morning, I got up, opened a couple presents. There was no doll baby. What's the first thing do we say? Jesus didn't hear my prayers, right? As a child and as adults, we still say Jesus didn't hear our prayers. So I, I went out to the barn with my dad as he was going to milk the cows, and I ran over to my box, and there lay the doll baby. And I was so excited, I said to my father, my earthly father, thank God. Jesus heard my prayers. Jesus heard my prayers. That is one of the stories that have just gone with me most of my life. Even at that moment when we're hurting and things aren't right in your life, Jesus still hears your prayers. He doesn't always give you that pretty little blonde doll. But he chose that day to do that for me. And I thank God that he chose to do that for me because it made an impact upon my life. Because it's not always the people that look pretty, that have all the money, that God has sent me all over the world to minister to. It doesn't make any difference who you are. Jesus still loves you. And he wants us to be the light of the world. God wants us to be spiritual fruit, not religious nuts. We are not here to shove the word down in somebody. We are here to love them. We are here to make sure that they know the love of Jesus Christ, no matter where they're at, no matter what circumstance they're in. Jesus is here to love them. And I want you to know today that no matter what circumstance you're in, if you're a child of the kingdom, 
no matter where you're at in your life. Jesus still loves you. But you know, saints, he wants all of you to go out and show your light, not hide it under a bushel, because we are children of light. And this is what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying at this season. Go out and look for someone that needs your light. Someone that is less fortunate than you are. Show them the love of Jesus Christ. Because there is children all over the city who has never heard the name Jesus. And I was in a grocery store. I'll tell you one story and then I'll... I was in a grocery store one day and, and uh, there was a young man and his little girl there. She must have been eight or nine years old. And as he got to pay for his groceries, he didn't have enough. And so I just handed the, the clerk the rest of the money. And I said to them, Jesus loves you. And I heard the little girl say, Daddy, who is Jesus? Daddy, who is Jesus? There's people out there in the world saying, Daddy, Mama, who is Jesus? He loves them, but they've never once heard that Jesus loves them. I'm going to ask everybody now if they would stand, and Pastor Lee and I are, uh, you know, all received a candle, I hope. Um, and we are going to let our light shine for Titusville because we are not accepting any more suicides by our young people in school. We're not accepting people selling drugs on our street to our children, our grandchildren. We are not going to accept this. We are going out there and let our light shine. So I ask you today to minister to one another because we may come into the church and be smiling and saying everything's okay, but you can leave that everything is not okay. So we're asking you today as we light your candle and you light the next person's candle that you say a prayer with them, a short something to them to encourage them that Jesus does love them. Jesus loves you, Lee. Jesus loves you. Thank you. For them. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. As you pass that Good. light, please share light that again? message. And Jesus loves you. As you pass the light of Jesus Christ, share that message that Jesus to be a loves you. As you pass the light of Jesus Christ, share the message that Jesus loves you. As you pass the light of Jesus Christ, share the message, share the message that, that Jesus, Jesus loves, loves you. Them. As you pass the light of Jesus, share the message that Jesus loves you. As you pass the light of Jesus Christ, Jesus share the you. message. Jesus loves you. He hears your prayers. You have no one to pass to, but Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. And he hears your prayers. As you pass Sometimes the light, share right the away, message that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. As you pass the light of Jesus Christ, share the message that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. You too could do that. Do you want?
never want to get too old and feel you're above singing the song, Yes, Jesus Loves Me. Because he told me in his word that he loves me. Sometimes, as you noticed when I was coming up, I had to shield the flame because the world tries to put our flame out. But I want you to know that Jesus is here today to tell you that he loves you and he wants you to take this light unto the world and to give to all who seem unworthy. Thank you. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we've come here today, Lord, giving your word as you prompt us to say. Father, we ask you that you will touch each heart, that they will go out in this season, because this is a tough time for so many. They've lost their loved ones. There has been families who their children have committed suicide. They're, they've lost their mothers, their fathers. And we think of Brother Larry as he's lost his stepfather today, Lord. And Father, there's so many that don't know that someone loves them. We ask you to minister to the hearts today as you minister to us, Lord. And we'll give you praise. We give you honor in Jesus' name. Our closing hymn is number 219.
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you as you take the light of Jesus Christ out of this place into all the places you go. Amen. Amen.